Just like you, my fellow thrifters, I spend a lot of my supposed relaxation time hunting for that perfect piece on the various second-hand marketplaces. By perfect piece, I mean it's exactly what I am looking for, and it's a total bargain. And that, you may have already guessed, comes with the territory. Oh, that feeling when after days of searching you finally find the one, and for a fraction of the price you message the seller, is it still available, and they respond, letting you know that it is. But the piece needs some TLC. But you are a DIYer, so that doesn't faze you one bit. You go and get it, bring it home, and as the thrill slowly starts to fade, you look at your new treasure and exactly how much TLC it needs and think to yourself, can I actually fix this? Hello, my dear friends. Today we are going to be attempting to reanimate a severely damaged piece of furniture. I was searching high and low for a vintage leather captain's chair on casters to use in my workshop. If you aren't familiar with the kind of chair and the average pricing for a second-hand piece, even damaged ones typically go for at least £150. Since my chair would be used in a messy place and get a lot of wear and tear, I didn't want to pay that much. I scored mine on Facebook Marketplace for £80, and I knew that there is some damage to the leather. But when I brought it home and looked at it closely, I was taken aback by how filthy it was. It literally had dead bugs stuck to it. And I thought there is no hope for it, and I made a mistake. But after hosing it down and scrubbing it vigorously, all the dirt thankfully came off, and I was ready to take on this repair. Here is the chair in question, demonstrated by my lovely assistant. Overall, it's very solid and generally in pretty good shape, apart from some scuffs on the wood, those god-awful plastic casters, and the obvious, pretty large tears in the leather on the armrests. I have a tendency of believing that I can do anything and without any prior experience, and that it's gonna turn out incredible. My leather repairing experience only went as far as putting some colored polish on my shoes, but I love a challenge and an opportunity to learn something new. I had a plan A and a plan B for this leather repair. Plan B, in case plan A failed, was to take out the upholstery nails surrounding the damaged area, create a new leather patch, glue it and nail it all back in place with said upholstery nails. But obviously, I wanted to try something else first. Have you ever seen those incredibly satisfying TikToks of professionals repairing cracked and torn leather car seats using some kind of mesh and paste and the repair looking virtually invisible? Yes, that is the stuff I wanted to try. I went on a popular site, Amazonia, I think it's called, and purchased a leather repair kit for my plan A. It came with everything I needed, including instructions, and I was ready to start my experiment. The tears were not only in the leather, but chunks of foam pad were torn out too. And firstly, I needed to restore that. I had to get a little creative because I didn't have any upholstery foam on hand. So I used the sponge from the hardware store. It had a very similar squish and worked just fine. I cut a small chunk of it somewhat resembling the tear, used some super glue to stick it in and tucked the edges under the leather. I repeated the same steps on all four tears. Afterwards, as per instructions, I trimmed frayed edges of the tears, and also my sponge, to all be clean and smooth, and then I used the prep pad that came with the kit to degrease and prepare the area. Now it's time for the fun stuff. First step is to glue down the mesh. This tiny square of mesh is all you get in this particular kit. It was enough for the size of my repair, though I had to be resourceful while cutting it to shape. If a larger area needs to be repaired and this square doesn't cover it, I'm sure any muslin cloth would do just fine. As instructed, I had to cut the mesh slightly larger than the tear. 
afterwards with a wooden spatula I have tucked the mesh under the leather. The mesh is needed to provide a surface for the filler to adhere to, as well as to give structure and support to the damaged area. Using the leather glue provided, I carefully peeled back the edges and applied a generous amount of glue, and began the mesh installation process. Because the tears are right next to each other, I had to finesse with them quite a bit, as everything kept on moving. It always looks so easy when you watch videos of people doing it, but this is real life, and I struggled here a little, but got there in the end. In hindsight, I should have used some tape to pull the edges closer together. This glue, though, was very easy to use, and I had lots left. Once the mesh installation was complete, I trimmed away any loose threads. I was feeling very excited to start the filling process. If you are too, hit the subscribe button. When I first saw how tiny the leather filler tube is, I got pretty worried it would not be enough for my repair. The process is pretty straightforward. You squeeze a little filler onto the surface and spread it over the surface, simultaneously smoothing it with a spatula. The filler is toothpaste-like consistency, and I found it fairly easy to work with. However, as soon as it gets in contact with air, it starts to set, so you do have to work fairly quickly, otherwise it will start to form little crumbles if you keep agitating it. It is recommended to wipe away any excess filler with a lint-free cloth and warm water. The instructions suggest to apply thin layers and apply as many as you need, letting them dry in between. To speed up the process, it is also okay to use a hair dryer. And as the first layer of filler went on all four tears, I used the hair dryer for a few minutes to let it set and repeated the whole process again and again, until I was happy with how it looked. I believe I have applied four to five coats. There is no need to worry if the filler is not perfectly smooth, as we will be sanding it later. However, in order to make life easier for your future self, it is a good idea to try and make it as smooth as possible during the application process. I have left it to dry for several days, gave it a little sun, and realized that the surface was still too bumpy and lumpy, and needed a few more coats of the filler. I used my fingers with gloves this time, it helped me get more control and a way smoother result. And now it's several days later and I'm ready to finish the filling process, as I still have so many things to do with the chair. I have also filled some of the deepest cracks around the armrests. This time I used my own sandpaper in a slightly rougher grid, followed by a very fine grid, and it gave way better results. I was very gentle while sanding, as being too rough with it can cause more damage than good. I have ordered my repair kit in red, and it came with a large tube of red paint, primary colors, and a white and a black for mixing. At this stage, I decided to throw on a layer of red paint straight out of the tube, so that I would be able to see any small imperfections that still need fixing. As I applied the red paint, I could see loads of small imperfections I still needed to correct, and I was over it at this point. At this stage, I also decided all cracks had to go, as they were making the repaired area look very obvious. We don't do things halfway on this channel, and I was determined to get that perfect, undetectable repair, no matter what. I proceeded by adding tiny amounts of filler into all the cracks and crevices, sanding everything down and repeating the whole process over and over until I got to a smooth surface. Remember I said I was worried I wouldn't have enough filler? Well, this tiny tube went a really long way. Once I was happy with it, I went ahead and mixed a little black into the red, and applied several coats of this paint. 
It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to dry in between coats. Then I mixed red with some magenta to create a perfect color match. I found that using a dubbing motion with a sponge and applying thin layers, slowly building up the color works best with this paint. And here is our leather repair. It isn't 100% perfect, but I am pretty happy with it, especially considering it was my first time. You didn't think I would just stop here, did you? Stay tuned, because I will be changing the color of the chair completely. Because surprisingly, red doesn't fit with my space. I only color matched it to have an even base to work with. But before we get to that, let's work on our chair leg a little while the paint is drying. Earlier I have detached the leg from the chair. As I did so, I noticed there is one piece of wood trim missing too. So let's make a new one out of a scrap piece I had in my stash. I'm still a little afraid of using the miter saw and this is a tricky cut. The piece needed to be cut at a 45 degree angle lengthwise, so I summoned my husband to help me out. He said it's impossible. I said I saw carpenters online super gluing tricky pieces they need to cut directly to the saw or onto a scrap piece and then directly to the saw. This hack totally worked. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Every single caster came off easily, except that the one I decided to film, of course. After struggling with it for about 30 minutes, I have won this battle and put these ugly casters where they belong, in the trash. I have replaced all the screws at the base, as they were very old and rusty, so the feet no longer wobble. Then I greased up the height adjustment mechanism, and as I turned it all the way to the lowest setting, I noticed something popped out from the bottom. It took me a minute to figure out what it is, but I was so happy when I did. You see, the turning metal pole used to rattle within its tube, and the thing that I found is what stops it from doing so, that simply detached from age. So I grabbed my trusty construction adhesive and glued it back in place. Another great day of DIY is upon us. All the glue and paint are now set, and before we address the scratches on the wood, let's recolor that chair, shall we? I know, it's quite unbelievable, and you probably expected black, but the color that I want my chair to be is a dark, cool-toned brown. Yeah, I know, who even am I? I've got a small bottle of dark brown leather paint from the same brand as everything else I used so far. And here I am applying the first thin coat of it. The color is lovely, however, because of the red underneath, it does come out very warm toned. And that is not what I was going for. Once the paint had dried, I have mixed a dark green from my original kit. You all probably already know, but in case not, Green will neutralize the red, as they are opposite on the color wheel. So I painted the chair green. It turned out such a lovely color. Spoiler for those of you who are still with me. If my workshop was not green, I would have kept it this way. But we must continue with our transformation. After the green was dry, using a small brush I went ahead and opened up all the creases of the leather and applied some black paint in there. I love the antique effect the original chair had, and will be recreating that. Once all that was dry, I applied my final coat of brown. Once again, I was surprised how far this tiny bottle stretched, and it was more than enough for my project. Note, I have painted over the upholstery nails and went over the wood a little, in order to cover up every bit of red leather, but don't worry, I will address that later.
Finally time to address the scratched up wood. As I do furniture flips on the regular, I have quite a collection of wood stain in different colors. Liberon palette range is my all-time favorite. This particular range allows you to mix and match your colors with no issue, so I mixed up a few shades and began the staining process. I started with the lick. I didn't bother to sand and smooth the scratches, as the stain gave enough of visual refresh. I applied two coats, wiping away any excess. I also stained that little piece of trim we cut earlier. Before I could do the same with the chair, I had to remove the leather paint that got onto the wood. I used nail polish remover with some Q-tips and cotton rounds, and carefully removed the excess paint, and it worked like a dream. I also tested removing the paint from the upholstery nails that I was sure were brass, but turned out they were silver, so I left them painted because I have another plan for these. Afterwards, I stained the wood on the chair. I covered the leather part in clean film, as I was a little scared to use tape on my freshly painted chair, and gave it two coats of clear glossy varnish. I also varnished the leg and the trim. Once all that dried, I glued the trim back in place. The time has come for everyone's favorite part, finishing touches and final reveal. I took some antique gold paint onto a tiny brush and dry brushed each and every upholstery nail to make it look like aged the brass, and it worked out perfectly. Afterwards, with a little black leather paint, I went over the creases and crevices to create that aged look that I was talking about. This step added so much life and dimension to my piece. I have hammered in hardware for the new casters into the existing holes. I couldn't find my actual hammer, so I had to use this one that I stole from Thor's DIY toolkit. But don't tell him. Then I simply poked the casters right in. To those of you who recognized the caster, you are the best, and I wanted you to know that. I reassemble the chair and style it in a little vignette for the final reveal. <laughs> To answer the question, can I fix this? Well, yes, yes I can. What do you think of this transformation? I am so happy with the final result, and I almost feel sad to use it as my workshop chair. But now I know, if I damage it, I can repair it. Thank you so much for watching, my dear friends. Do you like fixing things? I have a strange obsession with that. Maybe because while I repair them, it feels like I'm also repairing myself at the same time. Follow me on TikTok if you're not already to see more sneak peeks of the house and lots of puppy content. Link is down below. Thanks again and I shall see you soon.